Hi, my name is Keith Casey, and I'm a technical marketing manager here at Okta for our API access management product. Our API access management offering gives you the ability to extend Okta to protect and secure your APIs with a reliable identity and access policy layer. We do this by dividing the problem in half. The first, or internal half, is Okta's universal directory. We allow you to grant your users access with strong, auditable policies to authenticate to your APIs. The most important part is that those users can be employees, partners, or customers, and you can use customizable policies to meet each of those groups' needs and expectations. Your existing IT or security staff can work within the tools and space they already know. The second, or external half, is how developers connect, and that's through OAuth 2.0. I don't mean OAuth-like or OAuth-friendly, but a real, accurate, and reliable implementation. That means your team's investment in time and tools to use OAuth is not lost. In fact, it should apply directly. I want to give you some of the best practices that I think will be of use to you in your day-to-day -day use of API access management. We use JSON standard web tokens to make sure that the information like groups so your API can grant and deny access as appropriate. More importantly, by using a standard refresh token, you can come back to us and revalidate or confirm access at any time. And while many of our customers use API access management directly, we can plug into API gateways like Apigee, AWS, and Azure. That way you don't have to duplicate your user credentials and permissions in numerous places. But enough talking, let me show you how it's done. Just as I described earlier, API access management has two halves. First, let's configure the external or the OAuth half. This is a simple OpenID Connect client, which will allow a developer to authenticate with any standard OAuth library. From here, we set a name. We set a redirect URI that our client will go back to once they've authenticated. And then from here, we can choose the grant types that are available to the user and get our client ID and client secret. Now let's configure the internal half or the authorization server. This is what defines the rules and requirements developers have to follow to gain access and to connect to our API. First, we name the authorization server, or we reference the API that we plan to protect. Once we save, we can add scopes and claims for our developers to use. In this case, let's go ahead and add two scopes. First, we'll add a scope to note that the API supports read-only access. Next, let's add a scope to denote that we support read-write access also. The most powerful part of all, though, are the access policies. Access policies are a group of rules that give us fine-grained control to define which scopes are available to which users depending on who they are, what groups they are members of, and how they connect. In this case, imagine a bank that gives you read-only permissions on the mobile app, but allows you to transfer money via the same API when you visit their website. You'll appreciate that the next time you lose your phone. All this is done via this configuration right here. So we can go ahead and we can add a second rule here, specifically for desktop applications. We make sure that when you connect via the desktop application that you end up with read-write access, as we've seen here. And that is how you configure API access management. I'm sure that you have a few questions at this point. Let me address some of the more common ones, and any that I don't cover, feel free to visit our help center and ask questions there. The first question is, what OAuth grant types or flows do we support? Out of the box, we support the implicit or the hybrid flow which is ideal for mobile devices. Next, we support the authorization code flow, which is what most people are familiar with. And finally, the resource owner password flow. On the internal side, we support server-to-server -server flows for client credential grant type. Next question, can I create custom scopes and claims? Yes, you absolutely can. You can create any scope or claim you need to support your application. You can even have group-specific scopes so your legal and marketing teams can have completely different permissions. The final question, what is the lifetime of an access token? That's entirely up to you. 
Our default is one hour, but you can set the minimum as, to as little as five minutes and the maximum to 24 hours. That's all I have for now. I want to thank you for listening, and now I hope you understand that our API access management product can protect your APIs as quickly and easily as Okta protects the rest of your applications. Thank you.